Air Don Guardian day one about the world's playground. Brought to you by the New Jersey Casino Reinvestment Development Authority and Municipal Equipment Enterprises on Fire Road in EHT, your New Jersey contract headquarters. To talk to Mayor Guardian, call 407-1450. That's 407-1450. Now, with Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian, here's Harry Hurley. Thank you very much, and welcome back. It feels like we just left. Oh, that's right, we did. This is part two of a great evening. Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian, about two and a half feet from my microphone, we have a very important hour. First, Mayor, let me say good evening and welcome to your award-winning program. No, our award-winning program, and it's great to be sitting in the same uh, seat as our, uh, our our good friend and senator from uh, Cape May. He's a good man. He's a very good man. And you're a good man. And, and he's been very supportive of Atlantic City uh, and, and the interest of South Jersey. He's been unwavering in his opposition to casinos in any area of this state other than Atlantic City. Absolutely. And that's that's been important. Yep. His leadership is it is. is very important because we, we don't have it in all quarters, which is which is regrettable. Because of the nature of what I do, I'm very proud to say that I've obtained a copy of a memo. I hope it does not displease you because it is a memo, a letter that you wrote to the federal government on the 10th of August. I want to apologize to our listeners that it's the 11th. I'll do better next time. It's as current as it could be to Margaret Wilson, who's the section chief of this whole uh, SAVER program, SAFER program rather, and this is relative to the SAFER grant program. I'm going to read this letter uh, dated yesterday. Dear Miss Wilson, as mayor of Atlantic City, I am fully supportive of maintaining the Atlantic City Fire Department at the budgeted strength of a 150 firefighter for the length of the SAFER grant period. All annual budgets during the grant period presented to the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Local Finance Board shall allow for the maintaining of these positions resulting in no layoffs if you have any further questions or concerns and you give the number and then it's uh, thank you and sincerely donald guardian mayor of atlantic city so to anyone out there mayor who is doubting your commitment you know i fully vetted this for months no absolutely at every turn and brought you on when people were saying that the city didn't do this or that arch didn't do that and we were able to show every step of the way that the city wanted this to continue and you've done the work required to make it stay in place and it's really a- an approval of the federal government at this point a- absolutely uh, you know i'm very grateful to the federal government both our senators and, and congressman lobiando in helping us obtain the safer grant um, you, you know the issues that we had uh, with firefighters was never about the individual it was about the the cost of, of firefighters and the federal government coming in and helping to underwrite 85 of them uh, is a great help to us and we've got to be very supportive i think anyone that would not agree with this just got to be very foolish and, i mean it's it's better for public safety it obviously Absolutely. in a rough economy it keeps a number of people employed like it, 85 at least that would lose their jobs exactly so this is through if i understand september 26th of 2017 was the number I had right right that's in the right past. yeah so we're, we're looking through uh, how long the the money's going to last right now and I think uh, t- uh, speaking to uh, um, our uh, uh, chief uh, Grenice he had told me he thought about the third week of September so it was important for this to yeah. go through so we get a, a two-year extension and then we'll go for another two-year extension after that I, I know I, I know you can't we have make, a lot of friends in uh, Washington yeah and I know you can't make promises for another branch of government but do you have a hopeful good feeling that this is favorably being received and that this two-year extension should happen? Yes, I, I do. And, and uh, you know, uh, I think I told Harry, uh, I'm trying to think, I think back in June, um, I, I traveled down to D.C. Uh, to uh, get garner support for the uh, SAFER program, among other programs, and certainly stopped in with uh, all of the people that were able to help make it uh, work, and uh, we got their support. It's, it's very good. It, it's what I was talking about. It's, you know, the, the, it's, it's what we're doing in the city. It's what the Board of Education is doing. It's what the, the federal government is doing. It's what the state is doing that's going to move Atlantic City ahead, and, and but by doing that, we, we move all of Atlantic County ahead. Mayor, let's talk about this pilot thing, because yeah. even when, if the governor approves it, conditionally vetoes it and changes certain things, this doesn't change anything involving this revenue issue between the county and the city. I asked the county executive recently, I asked, I asked Assemblyman Brown, even though it's a little bit outside of his lane, uh, although not really because it is a state matter as well, but I asked him his feeling. My question, I think it's the definitive question, What, what 
does it take to get us to the finish line? What's going to happen here? Um, I, I don't know, Harry. Um, I, I can tell you, you know, uh, uh, there was an article written initially about people in South Jersey in Atlantic City panicking. So there's no panic. E every day I have a number of crises. You just deal with it day to day and you make uh, arrangements and you move forward and you, you find funds and you, you beg and, and you get things done. Uh, it'll be no different with this, but you know, with the, the Senate and the Assembly, and don't forget, you know, we're, we're outnumbered down here in South Jersey. So this is the Assembly and the Senate from North Jersey, from Central Jersey, from West Jersey, all coming to our aid and supporting these bills and, and we want the governor to sign them. Um, I, what, what I've said is, I don't think it's fair now to be ripping apart the bills. You had six months to be calling uh, this, this Senate president. Yeah. I mean, Senate President Sweeney said, listen, I, I, I attended the first two summits. Here's the solutions that I can offer. He puts the bills together. Yeah, it seemed People, like everybody was on board. Yeah, there was, and in fact, right. had it not been delayed, uh, and I've, I think it was right. over a union the issue, Trump, to be honest, yes, the Trump thing. It yep. would have passed. Yes. There would have been no fanfare. I, I think it would have been signed. I, I think we would have just been much different than we are now. Absolutely. So, so but so, even though, even if yep. the governor just signs it all, Mayor yep. Guardian, right. you still have to work out the percentage. Right. And, and they and did it on purpose that yes, way. I, I got it. And so the bills that we have now are not the, the conditions of the bills. When I met with uh, the uh, county uh, executive back whatever it was six to eight months ago and things the the bills have changed and i i said from the beginning i if it's up to me and i have a decision to make i'm going to be fair and equitable to everyone. It's not going to punish anyone because punishing the county is, is ridiculous because uh, count, uh, my own taxpayers, my property taxpayers in Atlantic City have to pay uh, county taxes so we're going to do what's fair and, uh, and and we'll continue to do that. But but the bills right now aren't the same as they were when we started this process and I don't know what the governor is going to do. And that's why I said, uh, you know, people are saying well, is it 10.6% or is it 13.5%? Well right now it's 10 percent, but I didn't make up that decision. This is following state statute, which allows the county tax administrator to determine what it is. So the county tax administrator says it's 10.6 so far this year, and that's what we've been paying on a quarterly basis to, to the county. It, it state just because we collect the money doesn't mean that we get to keep the money. We, we have a moral obligation to be paying the, the school, the library, the uh, county uh what their percentage is one last sort of press on this sure. i didn't i didn't bring it but you know i have it and i've read it before i have it on my briefcase i didn't bring it to like throw it in your face or anything yes. but i do have this infamous letter where you and the county executive yes. agreed based on the information at the time everything was correct for me to comment anymore to, to give a guarantee i i don't know so harry what don't i know I don't know if it's going to be 15 years or it's going to be three years. When we talked about 13.5%, that was based on, on the past 15 years because we're moving 15 years in the future. If it's three years, then we should be coming to the conclusion that it's a three-year average, not a 15-year average. Initially, there was uh, uh, it was almost every uh, news uh, paper reported that uh, it was $150 million to be, be split up among all the groups. But the bill doesn't say that now. The bill says 120 and then 30 million goes directly to the city. Then there's an additional five million dollars for resorts and golden nugget. Was there also a different for difference for the first two years? Yes. So that's even different. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. I've got to see what the bills are, what whether the governor's gonna pass it, do nothing and allow it to pass when the uh, assembly returns after the election, or if he's going to do some line vetoes, and then so we'll act fairness, accordingly. In fairness to the record, yes. if the numbers change, then the the total circumstances change. That's that's in, it, Harry. Including that document, and which at that point in time was as accurate as it could be then, but and it, circumstances have changed. And it was fair and equitable at the time, and, and the circumstances, we don't know what the circumstances yeah. are now. No one can guarantee what's going on. I know the governor signed a number of bills this uh, past week, and he vetoed a number of bills, but this is still sitting on his desk. How important do you think it is for the pilot bills to be signed into law, for them to be enacted? Because I think markets are punishing. I think Standard & Poor's yeah. punched Atlantic right. City, two downgrades in right. face 
because of uncertainty. So we got the downgrades now because the governor didn't sign the bills. We got the last six downgrades because the governor signed an emergency manager to help us. So all of our downgrades this year is nothing we've done. I mean, we, we've been we've been the good student, the good pupil. We're the ones that cut forty uh, million dollars. The 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 school cut twenty one million dollars. We're doing what what's asked of us. Uh, but but we need we do need to be coming to uh, 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 an agreement with all levels of government so we can stabilize the cost of government. You're listening to Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian. It is 15 minutes past the hour. We're going to be here until about 5 past the next hour. 609-407-1450 phone lines are open. You usually, and I think you will tonight, blow up the phone lines during Ask the Mayor with Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian. We love your email questions as well, and let me uh, demonstrate that now. Frank in Atlantic City writes in, Dear Harry, can you kindly ask Mayor Guardian if there's anything new to report on regarding the addition of, quote, meds and eds industries to the city? You and I have talked about this before. Sure. I think it's a great question. Yep. Your thoughts? It sure is. So I think right now it, it was great news reading the paper this morning. Uh, Judge Mendez had said, listen, uh, we're looking at everything in order for Stockton to be able to, to sell Showboat. And uh, and he gave them permission to sell it. And he gave it, them permission. He's saying, listen. Which they need it. Right. And so I think once you allow them to sell it, and uh, I understand that there are several uh, several people that are interested in buying Showboat. Good. We'll see whether or not uh, that, that uh, materializes. Well, it was but very there, challenging There's lots for of them. interest. It, there's still this um, covenant because... To buy a property sure. that has to be a casino but can't be a casino right. is insanity. Yeah. There's a double covenant. It's, it's crazy. Right. And and that's why the, the price is, is what it is because yeah. of all this confusion. But we need to let Stockton sell that. Then, uh, you know, uh, Harvey Kesselman, gr- great man, pragmatist and things. I think you'll see that he'll keep his commitment and build that campus that we need in Atlantic City. Uh, that'll be so good for the city, for our residents, for our children, and for South Jersey. I think it'll be a great campus, but I, I want to uh, refer to the Eds and Meds. I, I don't think Stockton is going to be alone. Uh, the college that I attended, you know, and graduated 40 years ago, and the college of today is, is quite different. Right. And so I think you'll see that Stockton will take a lead in the physical campus, but I would be very surprised if they don't have sister uh, universities that are going to be joining them. And I, I think you'll see what once uh, th- this gets cleared up, Stockton makes a point and also with Atlantic Care as their merger with uh, Geisinger comes true, then I think the, the concept of the School of Osteo Pedic medicine uh, next to the hospital, uh, perhaps a, a, a second corporate office besides the South Jersey Industries is what you'll you'll see breaking ground in in a series of months, not years. Mayor Guardian, I, I know this keeps coming up because there just seems to still be to some uncertainty about it, and and confusion maybe even. But what's the latest regarding the Atlantic City Municipal Utilities Authority? And I guess I could just say, are you going to be able to keep it as a city asset? Will you have to surrender? ownership and control how's this going to yeah, go I, I i've said it over and over again i i have no intentions of of allowing it to be sold and i will do everything i can to prevent that okay. i did think that moving it to utility makes sense so we can maximize the value that the city can receive because ultimately the people of atlantic city own own water uh the uh, uh mua came up with a, a a very good point just just days ago and they said mayor if you're being honest you're saying you're trying to obtain another five million dollars or so per year for the city to to go uh, toward tax payments uh, if we as the authority can come up with five million dollars can we stay in authority the answer is absolutely yes so well, let me just check to make sure uh, with uh, the, the state with with my emergency manager with my monitors and I went back and I said you know you, you told me that all, the only issue was additional dollars every year if they can do that uh, continue as they are continue the f- as i said before the fine quality of water the fine distribution award but winning bring award winning yes. but bring more dollars to the city so is can that- they can they deliver and, five million and so i know uh, they had a special board meeting this monday and they uh, uh have moved to hire an independent uh, accounting firm as well as an engineering firm to be able to determine what kind of dollars they can so i think right now let, let's give them that opportunity again we were looking to to put Put this in place because I'm really looking towards 16 and 17. I, I'm I'm not looking just for 2015. 
this is not a slight of Kevin Lavin because I think he's talented. Uh, I've seen some of his work in other states. But what's going on? I mean, uh, in the beginning, you heard, like, you know, what he was doing. And it almost seems like they're just here still just to be here still. What's going on? You're not going to comment. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, I'm right. You know what? I don't I think have, it's time to leave is what I'm saying. I, I think uh, 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 Kevin and the whole team from Ernst & Young has been very helpful in trying to look at every position, every dollar, how we do things, and made recommendations, which we've accepted in, in almost every case. It, it's rare. When, when we didn't accept it, it's because they hit on a point that's so important to Atlantic City, you can't sell it. As an example, a PAL or, or the All Wars Memorial. It, it these are critical to, to the community. They always have been. So they're not up for, for discussion. We're going to keep, we'll, we'll try to run them as efficient as we can, but we're not selling them. We're not going to close them. But in all the other areas, they've been very helpful uh, so far. But at this point, they've made a lot of recommendations to the governor, but we've got to see if the governor is going to uh, accept them. Do you have any idea how long he will be around? I mean, I, I think we were talking about being phased out in, in 2015, but there's a, a, a report that I think I think uh, the, the uh, governor was asking for, and I do not know when that's coming out. The, um, the uh, hiring of someone at first that I didn't understand it, to be honest, but then I thought about the fact it got past Ed Sesdelli, it, it got past Kevin Lavin, so it, it, it ultimately I came to, con to the conclusion it must make sense, a former police chief, I think, who's now whatever sure. it is, half, you know, salary of, right, right. An, of an analyst. Right. What what was this for? So, okay, so the uh, Public Works Department, which, by the way, Paul Jerkins, as you know, gets yeah. high uh, yeah. points. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Yeah, uh, he's done a wonderful job, and, and I'm very proud of our Public Works Department. They really have stepped up to the plate. Um, there's always going to be uh, problems with uh, trucks breaking down or people not showing up or, or, or more people going to certain beaches and ha us having to step up how we, how we clean. But having said that, there was an assistant director. That assistant director was making $72,000 a year and took a promotional opportunity because he was certified in our construction department. So it opened up a position. The, the position, rather than going after an assistant director full-time, uh, we knew that there was an individual who, yes, was a, a police chief in, in a surrounding town, but he also was the interim public works director and the interim business administrator in another town. So highly qualified and very analytical and so the the BA arch list and said listen um, I can bring this guy in for the equivalent of 60,000 instead of 72,000 but I only want to bring him in for half a year I, I don't want to give him a permanent job uh, he's not going to collect the $18,000 a year that it costs for health benefits because he's he's a retired police officer and and honestly he's very very qualified and I think as the November elections occur and you have new mayors in New Jersey Someone's going to pick up this guy quick to be their business administrator. So this in the was meantime, not just a chief hiring a chief and no, 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 good no, boy no. network no, no. And, and all this. No, not, not at all. And I have to tell you, as of this morning, uh, this individual uh, has cut the cost just in vehicle purchase, use, and repair, $198,000. So, so that's what he's done in, in the few weeks that he's been there so far. He's riding on a trash truck. He's riding on a, a recycling. He, he's uh, visiting the, uh, the uh, maintenance yard to find out how we're repairing vehicles, and that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, we're we're going to do well. So he saved us $200,000 to date uh, on an annual basis. I think he'll probably be able to find another $200,000, and that's what we're looking for. So he's way then, more than paying for yeah, himself. And, and then I think what you'll see, Harry, uh, as he's phased out, I think you'll see that we're going to open it up according to civil service. And, yes, there are people within the public works department that I think we want to groom. Uh, uh, not that I'm trying to get rid of Paul. I want Paul to stay this Paul Jack as long as he wants. He's doing a great job. But it's always good to have too deep leadership. And I think the, the next logical choice is that there's one or two people that I think very highly of in public works. And I think if they get their certifications uh, in the next next couple of months, which would be very wise. Uh, I, I think we go through civil service, and if they qualify, we, we hire them. Great depth. We're going to come right back. It's 24 minutes past the hour. It is the New Jersey Broadcasters Association award-winning Best of the Best program, Ask the Mayor, starring Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian. We're going to be back in uh, 90 seconds. And again, you can jump at 609-407-1450. Phone lines are open right now. Good news. Good news. I've got good news for all three of you. <laughs> 
The WPG Talk Radio 1450 newsletter is yet another way South Jersey's talk station keeps you informed. Get the latest South Jersey news, community events, information on fun contests, links to exclusive YouTube videos, and more delivered right to your inbox. It's free. To sign up for the WPG Talk Radio 1450 newsletter, simply go to WPG1450.com. Today's Ask the Mayor program is proudly brought to you by the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority, building a better future for our region through strategic initiatives to reposition Atlantic City as a clean and safe, multifaceted, year-round destination and community. Since 1984, the CRDA has invested more than $1.5 billion in Atlantic City, with more than $750 million alone since 2011. The CRDA is taking the lead towards revitalizing and diversifying the city by investing in non-gaming attractions and development like Bass Pro Shops, the Waterfront Conference Center, Festival Park, new housing construction, Live Nation, and AEG events, plus community annuals like the Farmer's Market, Movies Under the Stars, Music and Poetry in the Park, Boardwalk Entertainment, and much more. In August and into September, Atlantic City will take excitement to a new level. Don't miss this year's beach concerts featuring Maroon 5 with Nick Jonas and Matt McAndrew on the 16th. Rascal Flats with Ashley Monroe on the 20th. The Color Run at Bader Field on the 22nd. Taste of the Quarter at Tropicana on the 24th. The Armed Forces Parade on the 31st. And the Atlantic City Air Show September 2nd. It's great to be in AC, the entertainment capital of the Jersey Shore. Atlanta County Municipal Equipment Enterprises is here to help with any commercial vehicle do you know where police cars come from? How does a normal car turn into a state-of-the-art police vehicle? Municipal Equipment Enterprises in Egg Harbor Township. That's how. Municipal Equipment Enterprises is a service management company for all of your New Jersey state contracts. They understand that government agencies demand more from their vehicles. They need cutting-edge safety features, impressive lighting packages, and high-quality installations, all at efficient costs. They're located in Atlanta County because they want your business. Municipal Equipment Enterprises can upfit any vehicle, painting, letter, Tinning, lighting, and so much more from names like Whalen, Satina, and Havis. Go to upfitme.com and click on the gallery page to see some of their excellent work. Owner Len Palestina proudly lives and works in Atlanta County. He knows your job is hard and he wants to make it easier. Go to upfitme.com or call 609 484 0555. Municipal Equipment Enterprises, your New Jersey contract headquarters, 2703 Fire Road, Egg Harbor Township, helping protect those who protect us. WPG Talk Radio 1450 presents Ask the Mayor. It's your opportunity to ask Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian anything you want about the world's playground. Brought to you by the New Jersey Casino Reinvestment Development Authority and Municipal Equipment Enterprises on Fire Road in EHT, your New Jersey contract headquarters. To talk to Mayor Guardian, call 407-1450. Now with Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian, here's Harry Hurley. And ask the mayor, 1450 AM Talk Radio with Harry Hurley, Look your mayor in the morning, in the evening, with Senator Drew, and now with Mayor Guardian. Yeah, I'm on a work release program. <laughs> Once a month, I'm allowed to come out uh, in the evening. Uh, mayor, the great, I uh, love the way the mayor just takes it back. Talk show prowess. Your phone calls begin right now at 609-407-1450. It is Ask the Mayor. He is Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian. And Walter, you're on the air. Ask the mayor, please. Hello, Mr. Mayor. This is Walter from Galloway. How are you doing today? Hi, Walter. Good evening. Good. Uh, the reason for my call is last month I was listening to your uh, talk show, and a gentleman called up regarding the trains for the Pope. Have you gotten any word from New Jersey Transit yet regarding what's going on with this? Because I can't find anything. I know they're having special trains. No. You know, I, I still don't have that, that information. I know that there originally was a, a Pope Pass that they there, were there, using. There was a lottery, I thought. Right. That was the only way you could get it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're walking over the bridge. Absolutely. And I know, like, um, um, Rutgers and Camden, as well as yeah. Drexel and uh, or, or Temple, all closing down uh, for that day when, when the Pope's here. I, I think we're going to have a huge turnout uh, for the Holy Father. No doubt. I heard there's actually going to be a, a United States ship that... They're going to sell actually beds, rent beds, you know, you know, 400 I, beds. I have to tell you. How I, cool is that? I, I never understood why we don't do that. Like that when we neat. have an emergency, why don't we don't bring an aircraft carrier in just for that reason? Walter, anything else? No, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks thank you, for Walter. calling. That, I'll tell you what, you talk about economies of scale. Economies of scale. That is going to be huge. Huge. Of the course. focus here. Yeah.
And, and the chance that you'll see a Holy Father again in your life is, is very slim. So um, I, I think it's a huge, uh, between the Washington, D.C., meeting with the president, speaking to Congress, the, the only actually open uh, forum is in Philadelphia, and then he's heading out to the United Nations uh, yeah. in, in New York it's as very, well. It's very special. But Let, Let's talk about some of the incredible things happening oh, the remainder of the summer. Cool. Let me, yeah. it's, it's not even being parochial. I just know how hard our president, Mike Rubel, Jennifer Dalton, who does a lot of our special events and yep. and all kinds Big of things. Big Saturday here at coming Square. up. This Saturday, Insane Inflatables. What a happening it was last year. Mayor, yep. we want to thank you here at Town Square Media Atlantic City. You're going to open things up. Yep, we it's are. going to be a great community activity. Yep, it, it's a, um, The Insane Inflatables last year, you had thousands of people showing up on Bay to Field. It, it's a definitely a fun activity for the inf- entire family. If you've never climbed up two, three-story inflatable and then slid down, you're in for a great treat. But it's fun for everyone. You you really should start your day. Uh, we've got great weather coming, it's and it's great. certainly a, what a great way to start this weekend. So, you know, we have the insane inflatable Right at Baderfield. At Baderfield. And then later on in the morning, uh, because it's the Feast of the Assumption, um, the uh, Italian community of, of Catholics is going to have the Wedding of the Sea, uh, a man Mass uh, in Boardwalk Hall, and then the actual wedding and blessing of, of the sea. And then, of course, on Sunday, we have our uh, huge concert. Uh, the uh, beach is going to open up at, at noon. Uh, it's going to be an incredible event. We, we know that... Uh, we have a brisk sales for Maroon 5. Uh, we're in great shape. We just met this morning locking up all of the public safety, public works issues that uh, are dealing with the uh, uh, concerts. And, and certainly Live Nation is doing a spectacular job. Food vendors in place, uh, alcohol vendors and, and libations uh, all, all in place. Uh, the misting tents, all of the emergency services. Uh, we actually widened uh, the entrances to the five beach areas so that you'll have a lot easier access. Although we were able to get everyone off the beach in 45 minutes last year, you'll be getting off in even quicker time this year. So exciting. And then Thursday, Rascal Flats will be back in in town. Um, So it's been a good summer so far. Last weekend we had uh, um, on Sunday morning uh, uh, a wonderful triathlon uh, and we had uh, uptown party. So uh, we're we're continuing with uh, some great weather. Water's nice. Uh, If you've not been in, beaches are beautiful, and we've got uh, temperatures in the 80s for five or six uh, days. So come on down if you you haven't been there and enjoy it. Um, Come down certainly for the uh, inflatables, and then uh, stay for the weekend. Mayor, we had a a little tickler file. We had a little carryover item from last month's program, and also for your planning purposes, because we love to do this, and the mayor has been so uh, terrific in terms of giving us two months availability at one time. We can tell you that next month, Thursday, September 17th, 6 o'clock hour, will be our September episode of Ask the Mayor, so you can plan on that. We'll be doing a lot of promotion about that, as we always do here at Town Square Atlantic City. But from last month, we brought the issue up about there were some tensions. They were understandably running high. The basketball courts were torn down from the Venice Park yep. courts. Yep. What's the update a month later? Yeah, um, you know, 21 days. Uh, they were right on schedule. But whether you're, you know, at Back Maryland, you'll see brand new courts. If you're over on the west side uh, at Horace Bryant, brand new courts. When I say courts, not only the surface, but new poles, new backstops, new baskets. Uh, and, of course, in, in Venice Park as well. So that that's all un- so it's under- much improved. Uh, way improved. And What's well, nice is when you have that courts. smooth surface. Yeah. Yeah, there's People nothing like that. that. Yep, yeah. and and you know bright colors. It's all, all the new uh, style. Unlike you know the, the playgrounds that we had as kids. Uh, now we're working over at Altman Field and completely remodeling uh, Altman Field with the damage that they had suffered during the uh, hurricane. And then uh, we'll be uh, out in Chelsea Heights building a new soccer field and baseball field out there as well. Here's a caller that I've seen in Atlantic City so many times over the past more than quarter of a century. He is Al, and you are on with uh, Mayor Don Guardian. Ask the mayor, please. Yes, uh, Mayor, thank you very much for the, uh, taking care of that the project on the, the New Hampshire Avenue. You, you put in a, a legal a crosswalk for the senior citizens and the disabled, and it's beautiful. I mean, it really, uh, you did a fabulous job. 
Yeah, thank uh, you, Al. Uh, you know, um, I, I think, I, I don't remember when McClinton Park was built, I'll say 15 years ago, and I remember being at a community meeting and, and seniors uh, at the time living in Jeffrey Towers and Inlet Towers asking for easy access so they don't have to climb a curb in an island and not have to walk to the end of the street. And when I campaigned, uh, people had said uh, from, from Jeffrey's Towers, uh, we'd really like you to look at this. So we immediately took that on, engineering some bureaucracy with the state to get permission but yeah we wanted to make sure there's a, a, a ramp there's no curbs uh, for the first time we have the signage that clearly indicates that pedestrians have the right of way and I understand that we're going to be trimming some of the trees so you have clear uh, visibility as a driver to make sure but, but please enjoy McClinton Park and enjoy uh, obviously being able to more easily get a course for the jitney as well no, it just goes to show that Atlantic City is a city that cares for the people that are in it and the people that come to visit it. Thank you, Al. And we appreciate you uh, as a mayor, and, I, and we pray for you because it's, uh, I know you have an awesome job ahead of you. Thank you. I do appreciate your prayers. Thanks, Al. Have a great night. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling in to Ask the Mayor. You're listening to Mayor Don Guardian of the World's Playground. That is WPG, after all, the World's Playground, the station, WPG. The beautiful uh, stained glass above where Miss America will be crowned in a few weeks, says WPG. WPG, it's I very, know. very cool. Yeah. When it was all renovated, that was all covered in layers of just dirt. Right. Uh, and it yeah. just it didn't even know it was there uh, until it just came back in pristine shape. Uh, mayor, member of our kitchen cabinet, reported into the program, and I want to thank this gentle lady. The convention center is offering parking $5.00. That's uh, at the base of the expressway. So you have a four-block walk, but I know parking is going to be at a premium for these well concerts and things, so that's nice to know. That's terrific. Boardwalk Hall has $25, and then you just walk around to the to the beach from there. And they, I'm not sure of exactly, um, well, the convention center, I know there's 4,000 parking spots. I'm not sure how many are available at Boardwalk Hall itself, but if you want to pay $5, You'll be reasonably close. You know you have a you know safe parking spot at a, at a very very fair price, and there's thousands of spots. So when people are wondering where can you park, yeah. here's a couple of options. Harry, uh, uh, the old uh, employee parking on the expressway is always also going to be open, and, and they'll be shuttle, shuttle in. in. There you go. So a lot of different options uh, in that regard. 609-407-1450, an open phone line. I just write down a few questions, and this is very much we just freeform this program. Mayor never says to me, hey, what are you going to ask? I never tell him what I'm going to ask. But I did write a little note down. How is Atlantic City, and I don't expect statistics, but generally speaking, how is Atlantic City doing regarding violent crimes in the city? Because yeah. we have to have sure. a safe city yep. to sell the city and everything yeah. else. So, you know, last year was a pretty spectacular year in the reduction of crimes, down 30 to 40 percent, depending on the type of crimes. I have to tell you, as we looked at our first two quarters, we're down again from last year. And I just saw the statistics today. The uh, chief shared them with me. Down 40-something percent in the number of complaints in internal affairs, down 30-something percent in the amount of use of force, uh, and e even uh, shootings, which is un unfortunate still down about 23% over last year. So crime continuing to come down. I, I really give a lot of credit to, to the men and women in blue. They're doing a, a, a really spectacular job, and, and they're connecting. I mean, on Friday nights alone, uh, we have a dozen or more police, uh, along with uh, the prosecutor's office and several of our faith-based leaders uh, walk uh, through the, the neighborhoods. You know, the, the villages uh, 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 um, the uh, back Maryland uh, neighborhoods, Carver Hall, and, and talking to people. We have uh, 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 one of the gentlemen that's working in the mayor's job placement program out there, making sure people realize that, that we have jobs and we'll, we'll be happy to help place them. Um, and, and so uh, it, it's really good. The, the, the crime's a real important uh, issue there, and I, uh, they're doing a very, very good job. And we still haven't brought on 
all of these computers and the cameras that we're talking about, that you'll see be rolled off out between now and the spring of next year. This will be police officers with cameras and mics? Well, the, the police officers have the uh, mics and the cameras. Now they have the body cameras. I'm talking about the cameras that will be on the boardwalk oh, that's right. yes. and, and side streets. Yeah. And then the ComStat, the actual computer that will be registering all this information. Is that um, spot shot? Still working. Spot shot is still working. And what, what you'll see, Harry, too, is as GPS becomes the, the norm now, you'll see that the cars will have GPS in them so that when, when you call 911, it'll automatically find the car that's closest uh, and send it to it. And it'll speed up the amount of time it takes for an officer to, to get to a call. Mayor, we're going to get our next call in right after the break. We're going to let this caller know we're going to get you right on. Please don't go away. You're going to be the next caller with Mayor Don Guardian. Let me put something out there that I have covered on her early in the morning but did not cover it with you on Ask the Mayor, and it really is on me because we should have done this about an episode or two ago. Larry and Daw Menti came into town over a period of several weeks. They put hundreds of hours into a project to do a one-hour TV special that played Memorial Day weekend in Atlantic City, all throughout New Jersey, all throughout Pennsylvania, and all throughout Delaware. It was titled Atlantic City, A New Day. You starred uh, prominently in it, members of city council, the council president, Councilman Tibbet, Chief White, which made me think of this when you mentioned the police and the job they're doing. They rode in the car with Chief White and did an amazing piece. I know you saw the special, but for two award-winning national caliber journalists to come in and tell the truth about Atlantic City, it was so refreshing, Mayor, and I wanted to bring that out because we should have before just to get your comment about that. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm very grateful. And and to be able to put positive information out there, and, and this one was quite factual. That's I mean, how you it, change perception. It wasn't just a puff piece. This yeah. was a, a very good piece. Yes. They talked to everyone uh, in, in the city, and they, they talked about it. I mean, this is a, a fun place to be. And, and Harry, it, it always amazes me uh, how many people come up to me on, on the boardwalk or in, in one of uh, the casinos and tell me that they haven't been to the city for years. They've come down and they're just thrilled. I mean, I had two mayors from uh, towns that are, are bordering us that came for a special event uh, this uh, past weekend at uh, T Street, and they were just shocked at how busy the boardwalk is, how many families are on the boardwalk. Um, just just really good to see. And our, our beaches have been packed. Of course, the weather's been nice, but I, I love seeing families on the beach at 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night. We're going to take a brief time out. We're coming right back. Don't go away. Jim, you are next with Mayor Don Gardner, and it's Ask the Mayor on WPG. Talk radio, 1450. We're at 42 minutes past the hour with an open phone line at 609-407-1450. We'll be right back. It's summer night. WPG Talk Radio 1450 is welcoming country music supergroup Rascal Flats to the beach in Atlantic City, and we want you to be there. Visit the 1450 Club at WPG1450.com for your chance to win a four-pack of tickets to see Rascal Flats Riot Tour 2015 on the beach in Atlantic City on Thursday, August 20th. Win Rascal Flats tickets in the 1450 Club at WPG1450.com. Atlantic County Municipal Equipment Enterprises is here to help with any commercial vehicle upfitting. Do you know where police cars come from? How does a normal car turn into a state-of-the-art police vehicle? Municipal Equipment Enterprises in Egg Harbor Township. That's how. Municipal Equipment Enterprises is a service management company for all of your New Jersey state contracts. They understand that government agencies demand more from their vehicles. They need cutting-edge safety features, impressive lighting packages, and high-quality installations, all at efficient costs. They're located in Atlantic County because they want your business. Municipal Equipment Enterprises can upfit any vehicle. Painting, lettering, tinting, lighting, and so much more from names like Whalen, Satina, and Havis. Go to upfitme.com and click on the gallery page to see some of their excellent work. Owner Len Palestina proudly lives and works in Atlantic County. He knows your job is hard and he wants to make it easier. Go to upfitme.com or call 609-484-0555. Municipal Equipment Enterprises, your New Jersey contract headquarters, 2703 Fire Road, Egg Harbor Township. Helping protect those who protect us. Today's Ask the Mayor program is proudly brought to you by the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority, building a better future for our region through strategic initiatives to reposition Atlantic City as a clean and safe, multifaceted, year-round destination and community. Since 1984, the CRDA has invested more than $1.5 billion in Atlantic City, with That's more it. than $750 million alone since 2011. 
The CRDA is taking the lead towards revitalizing and diversifying the city by investing in non-gaming attractions and development like Bass Pro Shops, the Waterfront Conference Center, Festival Park, new housing construction, Live Nation, and AEG events, plus community annuals like the Farmer's Market, Movies Under the Stars, Music and Poetry in the Park, Boardwalk Entertainment, and much more. In August and into September, Atlantic City will take excitement to a new level. Don't miss this year's beach concerts featuring Maroon 5 with Nick Jonas and Matt McAndrew on the 16th, Rascal Flats with Ashley Monroe on the 20th, The Color Run at Bader Field on the 22nd, Taste of the Quarter at Tropicana on the 24th, the Armed Forces Parade on the 31st, and the Atlantic City Air Show September 2nd. It's great to be in AC, the entertainment capital of the Jersey Shore. WPG Talk Radio 1450 presents Ask the Mayor. It's your opportunity to ask Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian anything you want about the world's playground. Brought to you by the New Jersey Casino Reinvestment Development Authority and Municipal Equipment Enterprises on Fire Road in EHT, your New Jersey contract headquarters. To talk to Mayor Guardian, call 407-1450. Now, with Atlantic City Mayor Don Guardian, here's Harry Hurley. Thanks very much. Welcome back. 45 minutes past the hour. Jim, your opportunity to ask the mayor. Please go right ahead. Yes. Hello to both of you Hello. and uh, to the mayor. What a positive force you are for Atlantic City. Wow. Thanks, Jim. Good I mean, evening. Periodic- yeah. Periodically, I drive around. I look at things. I was really happy to see those um, those old porno shops torn down. What oh, yeah. You have... Yeah, what plans do you have for that right there? Yeah, I'll I tell you what happened initially. Uh, CRDA was going to put an indoor market very similar to, to Reading Market. But more recently, we think that uh, the concept of the Eds and Meds, which is a, a medical school at that location, and potential additional corporate offices for Atlantic Care uh, as they be they merge with Geisinger uh, is is what the purpose of that block is right now. But I know that uh, uh, Tommy Sykes and Sash, the architectural firm that's working with them, is trying to see if they can incorporate the market at the same time. So they're trying to put everything on on that. The market obviously needs to be on the first floor with parking, but certainly the medical school and corporate offices could be on second through sixth, seventh, eighth floor. Really nice, and I, I took a walk on the boardwalk. I hadn't been there for quite a while, and I was just amazed at that. I really like those. What are they, TVs on there? Yeah, the really monitors. nice. Yeah, the monitors are nice. Uh, they're, they're doing a great job with giving you not just the temperature and the weather, but also with all the special events that are coming up in the city. And and this event, we're really excited because this is the first time that our police department is going to be able to use them to provide information, to give you information about the concerts, to help you move into the concerts and move out of the concerts after they're over. And it was real good news this week. Uh, we got the last section of Boardwalk funded, which is from uh, Metropolitan, which is where the uh, revel is now, all the way up to, to the where the boardwalk turns on Caspian Avenue. From Caspian Avenue all the way back to Gardner's Basin, you, if you come out to Pacific Avenue, you'll see the cranes. They're starting the demolition, and then the rock wall will, will follow, and then the new boardwalk. So by summer 17, uh, 18 months from now, you'll see the boardwalk for the first time from Ventnor all the way back to Gardner's Basin. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. That is nice. And all the evidence look, is looking pretty good. But what I want to talk about is this, is the bay. I mean, oftentimes we think about the boardwalk and the, the dunes and whatnot. But I'm just curious, because I know that they're, they put a pier or something. Was that Bass Pro Shop on the bay? They were working over there. I don't know what that's all about. But yeah. I saw the crane. So I, I can... Go ahead. No, no, please. I didn't want to interrupt. Please continue. Well, no, I just wanted to talk about the fact that, and I'm sure you agree with the fact that uh, that day to me seems like it has so much potential. I don't know, you know, for plans or, or if you have plans at all, but it seems to me that uh, one of the things that would really help that, that bay is possibly putting a boardwalk along there or some sort of promenade or walkway or something. If anytime you have water, uh, whether it's the bay, the ocean, people want to sit next to the water. I don't care what it is. All right, Jim, you teed it up. Let the mayor go with it now. Get out your okay. uh, your your big uh, Bertha, big big fat golf club driver. Go ahead, mayor. So, uh, Thanks, Jim. 
Thank you, Jim. Uh, I, I want to tell you, the area that Bass Pro is in had been an area that most of us remember as dual fuel. Yes. But before it, it had the oil tanks there, it actually produced gas. So you burn coal to produce gas. It was uh, not environmentally safe and, and probably stopped in the 20s or 30s. But the ground is contaminated. Luckily, South Jersey Gas is uh, in the middle of a multi-million dollar cleanup for the bay and for that area there. When it's finished, uh, you, you mentioned this, and it's kind of funny because I had the first developer ask me about the properties along the waterfront there, and they said, what a beautiful site once you clean it up from that area. So we're talking about Ducktown all the way back to the beautiful boathouse that Atlantic City High School has. And how exciting would it be to have uh, restaurants and cafes and, and uh, a walkway along the bay with things to do there? So I, I think that's what you'll, you'll see coming. Certainly we're in the process. Uh, Atlantic County Improvement Authority is doing uh, a uh, cost analysis for the part of Gardner's Basin that we don't own. Uh, it was where Garwood Mills is. It's known as Caspian Point. Great cider fest last weekend. So you know the area we're talking about. But we really see the, the bay as, as a gem. And uh, I, I do know that uh, we're going to be approved for a, a very large $9 million beach replenishment program in the next two years. And we're trying to work with the Army Corps of Engineers to make Make sure that they dredge the mouth of the inlet because the inlet is 23 feet deep that's large enough for a cruise ship the problem is that once you get to the mouth of the ocean it's only 15 feet deep so th this would come at no cost as as the army corps of engineer comes in a as they do a dredging project if they could dredge that area there then it moves us one step closer to, to the idea of, of larger ships coming back and, and it's like when we dredged when i worked for mr trump we dredged for the trump princess Exactly. At, so at Farley Trump right. Arena. And, and so now right next to the Golden Nugget, that yeah. property there would be ideal for, for a cruise uh, spot. Hey, Jim, your participation was absolutely awesome. Phone lines are open at 609-407-1450. We're going to take a phone call now, and then we're going to follow up with a question from Twitter. Uh, I'm, you know, listen, I'm going to say I'm partial to this person because they, they've been a faithful listener of Hurley in the Morning, of WPG. I know Chris Coleman's a big fan. I'm a big fan of Jitney Guy. Hashtag Jitney Guy, at Jitney Guy, is actually his handle. And at Jitney Guy, your question for the mayor is coming up next. But first, Abraham, it's your turn to ask the mayor. Hi, Abraham. Hello. Uh, how are you? Good. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I ask you directly, do you think that it's appropriate behavior when you are on the competing radio station, WOND, Radio you can depend on. When you wow. do that commercial, do you think that's a professional? All right, we, we got it. We got it. Listen, we're honest, or I could dump you, and nobody would ever hear it, but we don't play like that. Uh, I'm going to answer part of that first. An elected official has an opportunity to get public information out. You, you think it's a fair question, Abraham, to jackpot a show that I'm a part of? to try to make us look bad or make the mayor look bad because you want to say that he appears on another radio station. I've been doing this job for 25 years. Do you think I don't know that he is on other stations and, and communicating the important information? Uh, and by the way, why don't you compliment him for the commercial he did for me saying that we're on with the mayor of the morning who's out at night. Say, Abraham, do me a favor. Get lost. Mayor, I don't even think you should respond to that. Let me go to the uh, the Twitter question, which I think is a great question, and maybe part of it you just spoke about, Mayor, and earlier in the program when we talked about different partials of land. At Jitney Guy on Twitter, his tweet is, at Harry Hurley, at WPG1450, please ask the mayor about the various city partials that are up for RFP. What is the priority? Great question. Yeah, that is. Uh, Frank, thanks for the uh, question. Um, I, I know that the RFP is out. I, I know, for instance, uh, j just uh, passing Elizabeth Tyrannic, our uh, 
uh, director of planning in the hallway as I was coming in to the uh, show this evening. She told me that, for instance, the comfort station that's been closed for 30 years or so on Kennedy Plaza, that we have three groups all interested in doing some type of, of food or coffee uh, venue right there at that spot. Uh, we certainly have a garden pier at, at, that we were looking at, and then there are chunks of land that we're willing to give away to a developer that's going to come in immediately and develop them, and we're, we're looking for those different ideas. So I think in the next uh, couple of days, a uh, couple of weeks at the most, uh, people that uh, have responded to the RFP, we're going to act, we're going to go back to City Council, uh, uh, you know, I'm lucky with our council president, Frank Gilliam, uh, has been very supportive of, of development, and we want to do what's best for the city, and certainly bringing in new development, new taxes is part of that. So I, I think you'll see that going on. Uh, Gardner's Basin, uh, uh, the uh, Jitney guy knows, uh, Frank, uh, uh, we were very excited about the possibility of a distillery coming to Gardner's Basin, but the, the land that Gardner's Basin sits on is green acres, and so we're trying to move that designation to another location within the city so we can free it up so we can indeed develop Gardner's Basin. Mayor, I'm very impressed that you know the handle at Jitney guy is Frank. I'm very, yeah. very impressed. He's Frank, such a good guy. He is a great guy. Thank yep. you for your faithful listenership, always participating in early in the morning, and of course, uh, I know he loves asking the Yeah, and Frank, uh, my condolences. I know uh, th that uh, you just lost one of your dogs, and uh, I'm very sorry. I know how tough that is. I know how it, the, uh, a good dog becomes part of the family. And, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I think this is going to go down in history as another rebirth. I've written about it. We talked about it on that special that we talked about with Larry and Don Menti. Uh, I believe this is another rebirth of Atlantic City. There's going to be great non-gaming revenue opportunities. There will be great casino days still in Atlantic City. We have to fight. To, if, if it gets on the ballot because the politicians no. have the power, we've got to fight that question and beat it to keep casinos in Atlantic City only. But I feel really good and, in fact, really great about the present and the future of Atlantic City. And people are going to be looking about the real estate opportunities that there were yes. in this era. And, and you know, on, on that note, a week from this Wednesday, a week from tomorrow, uh, Elizabeth Taranek at noon with her noontime talks is going to actually talk about real estate development in Atlantic City, the best real estate right now for your money. So if you're interested, uh, uh, once a month she has a wonderful uh, 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 meeting uh, at, at noontime and uh, picks a different topic about planning or, or zoning. And, you know, it usually shows 100, 100 50 people usually show up and take part of it. I have to say, I agree with that statement. I believe, and you talk about when you're talking about Barrier Island, waterfront type property or near waterfront type property, it is the best buy that there is. I think the only downside, and you're working on it, is people don't know what the taxes right. are going to be. And yep. as soon as you stabilize that and people can count on that, right. I mean, the casinos uh, are going to have tax, tax stability. Yes. When you can give the residents tax stability. I believe Atlantic City is going to roar. Yeah, it, it's a critical point now. Yeah. So all of this development is coming because we're promising tax stability. Certainly the, the, the newest company, the calling center that's employing 330 people came here because of this Grow New Jersey uh, state incentive for them over the next 10 years. And I think you'll see a lot of development is going to come because this program's put in place. And I think by the end of September, I'm, I'm predicting that uh, the, the people with the, uh, uh, the Endeavor Group, with the a very exciting uh, water concept for the Atlanta Club, I think, will be closing and moving ahead. How challenging is it, I mean, to do a budget when you don't know certain factors, exactly how much state financing will be, be given to Atlantic City, where you don't know exactly what the revenue is going to be? Uh, you send out preliminary tax bills, right? Right. And then you work off of them. Exactly. But then something becomes more firm later. Then residents get hit with a new tax bill. And you yep. hope it's not like last year when they owed a whole lot more all I of know. a sudden at one time. But you were very good about giving people some time and some workouts and yep. things like that. But how challenging is this from a budget standpoint, from a tax standpoint? Well, it was a lot more challenging last year yeah. when casinos.
and pay their taxes. Yes. This year, I can tell you all eight gaming properties have paid their, their, their first and second quarter taxes. Third quarter taxes are, are out now, and I have no reason to believe that they're not paying them. So that gives you some stability. It's $128 million. It's a lot less than the $210 million that we took yeah. in last year, and that's less for the school, less for the county, less for the city, regardless of the pilot program. But uh, the taxes uh, have been coming in. Um, they're certainly now on the residential part. You see some 6,000 uh, residential properties that have filed tax appeals, and rightly so, because we need to find the fair market for everyone that's paying is their it, taxes. Is it still basically every single person just about that appeals wins? Uh, yeah, pretty pretty much. I, I wouldn't say win what they want, but you know, if you have three homes in your neighborhood and you can show that your homes are comparable to them and it, they sold for less than than your home is currently assessed, we're going to certainly give you that. When I say we, it's the state and the yeah, county. The it's not it's not the city that gets to choose. And I don't expect you because you're not the tax collector. You're, but I, I look at you as like the CEO of the city. How would you generally say tax? collections are going incredibly good so that's this a is sign. a very very that, that's solid a good sign. yes it is considering um you know that i i saw in the paper yesterday uh that the ten thousand job loss that that we had is down to two thousand uh county wide so there's two thousand fewer jobs certainly not good but certainly a lot better than the ten thousand initial jobs that we lost in the casino industry last year uh but but certainly everyone is, is having a difficult time with taxes and just keeping up their homes keeping up the lives. Mayor, uh, about four minutes left in your program. It always flies by. That's why I'm glad we get these extra couple of minutes uh, into the next hour or it would already be over. Uh, how would you say summer 2015 is going? So it's it been a, a very, very good summer. Uh, places like Tropicana that, that uh, took the bet and did that an incredible light show that's giving you fireworks every Saturday night. They're having probably the best summer they've ever had. All of the casinos are pretty comfortable. You know, if you haven't been to Festival Park over at Borgata, it's just a great new addition to, to a property that, that does well to begin with. Uh, over at Golden Nugget, they certainly, uh, Haven has moved up to be the top club. Uh, beautiful outdoor space uh, on top of the property, as you know, uh, that they grassed in, but that can hold 6,000 people. People. There was an NBCA mixer there that had about 800, and he actually felt like uh, uh, there was no one uh, on that property. So properties are, are doing well. Restaurants are doing well. Bars are doing well. Uh, you know, we, we haven't had the best of weather. Believe it or not, as warm as it is, 21 days, there was a threat of rain or rain, and that scares people, uh, our day trippers, uh, from coming down here. But it's been a, a very good summer. Boardwalk's been very busy. Uh, it, it's good to see. I certainly uh, am glad. Glad that uh, people are coming down and having a good time. We built the city for people to come and party, and that's what we've got to be able to do. Give them a good reason to come down another, and to enjoy themselves. Mayor, another area where I believe that the um, the city is doing very, very well, and that's with Jim Wood, Meet AC, and their team. Absolutely. They are wow. going gangbusters yep. right now. Yep. They're doing gangbusters. I mean, just uh, yesterday we had the media uh, press uh, for uh, a special conference over at uh, Hidden Creek because for the first time ever, they're going to have the USGA Senior Amateur Championships coming to uh, to Hidden Creek. Beautiful course, but that's just a, a, a shows you the quality of the courses that we have in Atlanta County. And, and as anyone that plays golf can tell you, we really can compete with Myrtle Beach and, and with with Ocean City, Maryland, uh, people just don't realize the, the quality and the quantity of the golf courses that, that make up the uh, Atlantic County uh, Shore area. Mayor Guardian, I don't think many people would have ever imagined, and this is not even that long ago, that Las Vegas could do more than 60% of its total revenue non-gaming. There, right. I forget the name of the property, but there's actually a hotel property that's doing non-gaming what most of Atlantic City does, all revenue combined. How optimistic are you? I'm going to just tip, tip my hand in a gaming town and say I'm extremely optimistic that we can defy the odds and do much more in non-gaming revenue in Atlantic City than anyone ever thought in the past. Yeah, so so uh, 10 years ago, $100,000 non-gaming revenue. Last year, a billion dollars, billion dollars. I see that growing to two billion over the next decade. And uh, just in the last two years, we're up 6% in non-gaming revenue. So if you get to the point where if Atlantic City really pulls this off, and I think we can, 
Atlantic City used to be a 5.2 or so billion dollar gaming destination right. resort, we could get back. Yeah, I, I to think, that area, I think can, including gaming right. and non-gaming. I, I think you're going to get to two and a half billion dollars in non-gaming, and you're going to settle in at two and a half so, billion so dollars. So we're a five in gaming. billion dollar so destination resort. Five, exactly, and I, I think that the the great job that Meet AC is doing and the uh, Atlantic City um, uh, Athletic Alliance. Uh, Sports Commission, I'm sorry, Lang City Sports Commission uh, is doing is going to bring back uh, the the crowds for the weekdays, especially when the weather is not so good. Closing comment, final minute. Yeah. Anything no, you'd like no to share? No last question. With? No, this is uh, just a compliment. It's okay. a compliment about a great program. Well, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a great summer. If you haven't come down, if you haven't kicked out tires, come on down. If there's something that you're not thrilled about in Atlantic City, you got to tell me because uh, I certainly want to improve it. So if we're not doing something, uh, I, I'm going to tell you we're going to do our very best to, to satisfy you, to make you happy. Um, you know, I, I, I have to uh, compliment. Uh, we, we did an electronic dance festival. We had 6,000 people on Saturday, and we had more than 10,000 people on Sunday. These are uh, uh, the same concerts that you had in Wildwood and Seaside that just didn't work. But because of the proper planning from Public Works and Public Safety, our police department, they went off without a hitch. 16,000 young people about 18 to 21 is the predominant age, had a great time on the beach. I know it was uh, noisy for some, but it, it's great to see them having a good time. Harry, always good to be with you. Can't wait for next month. You're listening to do, WPG. Do a commercial before you go. Ask I want the to, mayor. Abraham. Do a commercial. Talk, talk radio, 1450 a.m. <laughs> with the mayor in the morning on in the evening. Harry Hurley and Mayor Don Guardian, have a great summer. Enjoy yourself. Come on down and enjoy the Jersey Shore. And we will reconvene on Thursday, September 17th, for the next episode of the award-winning Best of the Best, Ask the Mayor program, starring Mayor Don Guardian. One quick shameless plug, because we're very excited about it. The lovely Kira Kazantsev will be in studio tomorrow wow. morning with yours truly, the Mayor of the Morning, from about 945 until probably right until closing, uh, 10, 10, She 10, has 10, been 06. one of the best Miss Americas we've great. ever had. I just no love doubt about Kira. It. Mayor, thanks for a great show. Thank you. We'll see you in just a few hours. Wake up early in the morning. I promise you we'll make it worth your while. It's good for you. Mark Levin, the great one, is next. And the Savage Nation, weeknights at 9, WPG, Atlantic City, and WPG1450.com. Broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin.